so today we have Mark Williams, and uh, Mark comes to us from uh, many years of education, and uh, mostly in the post-secondary sector. He completed his master's at the Simon Fraser University and earned his undergraduate degree from the University of BC. Uh, he is currently the Director of Admissions Enrollment at the Boucher Institute, and Allison Scott Dean is the Director of Admissions for Bastyr University. She recently relocated from Seattle to San Diego, where she served as the Associate Director of Admissions and Student Services. And prior to that, she was at the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. So I am super excited to have them both with us today. And uh, we will be getting started uh, with, with them both in just a little bit. Thank you so much for coming. Mark, it's yours. Good afternoon, listeners. I've been the chair of the admissions committee at the Boucher Institute for the past eight years and the Dean of Student Services for four years. And I have uh, met with or advised over a thousand prospective students. I have interviewed hundreds of applicants to the program and I've had the privilege and the pleasure to support approximately 500 naturopathic medical students in their journeys through the program and out into the profession. My time working closely with prospective and current students has provided me with a good amount of insight into how people make decisions to enter this program and pursue this amazing profession. Over the, past, over the next 20 minutes or so, I hope to offer you an overview of the types of questions prospective students ask, where they find the answers to these questions, and how they ultimately make the decision to apply to naturopathic medical school. I will discuss the main obstacles prospective students encounter when considering this career, and how current students overcome the obstacles and justify any perceived sacrifices. As you will hopefully discover, choosing to enter naturopathic medical school is a life-changing decision, and outside of starting a family, it is likely the biggest decision you will ever make. So if you're going to make such a big decision, it is important that you are prepared so that you know it is the right decision. So I'm going to move on to a slide called How to Spot an ND. Before I share information on the main obstacles faced in the decision-making process, I am going to briefly touch on some of the characteristics and personality traits of naturopathic medical students, as well as a few of the many reasons they, these people are attracted to this profession. I'm sure most of you possess some and likely all of the following characteristics. And perhaps the most defining qualities of naturopathic medical students and naturopathic doctors are they possess strong listening and communication skills. As you may already know, the first visit between a new patient and a naturopathic doctor typically lasts between 60 and 90 minutes. And the purpose of the first visit is to spend the time necessary to get to know the patient and conduct an in-depth symptom intake of the patient's health concerns to better understand how lifestyle, diet, and external factors such as environment and stress may be contributing to their, their symptoms and to understand the root cause of those symptoms. So an ND must be curious and skilled at asking the right questions during this important initial visit. And as I mentioned, I have met with hundreds of prospective students in the past eight years, and I'm constantly impressed by how passionate these men and women are about helping others and making a difference in supporting healthier, more sustainable, and ultimately happier communities. Naturopathic medical students are also open-minded, optimistic, and compassionate, and they typically have a love for the outdoors, exercise, healthy eating, and the environment. In order to manage the rigor of the naturopathic medical program, these students need to be resourceful, determined, confident, and committed. Naturopathic, naturopathic medical students are also self-starters, lifelong learners, and academically strong. So, Moving on to career opportunities, many prospective students are drawn to this profession because it's a career that, others may, that offers many pathways and opportunities. While the majority of the NDs choose to enter private practice, there are many clinical and non-clinical employment opportunities. NDs have found positions in nonprofit leadership, public health, corporate health, government policy making, as faculty at colleges, as health and wellness advisors for sports team, in media and journalism, and much more. So in today's world, the vast majority of people change their career focus multiple times, and the field of naturopathic medicine allows for doctors to change their focus, if desired, mid-career without requiring further education or retraining. So clear, career flexibility and balance. According to feedback from practicing NDs, their ability to set their own schedules is an important factor that has led them to report high levels of career satisfaction. NDs report a high level of career satisfaction compared to many other healthcare professionals. 
So in a 2015 survey sent out to Boucher Institute alumni, 84% of the respondents reported being either very satisfied or satisfied with their career. And in a 2015 survey conducted by the ANMC, so all the naturopathic medical schools, um, alumni from these accredited naturopathic medical schools, 70% of the respondents indicated they are very satisfied or satisfied with their work-life balance. So in comparison to a study done by the Mayo Clinic, only 41% of American medical doctors agree or strongly agree their work schedule leaves them enough time for personal and or family life. So it's this flexibility and the opportunity for controlling work-life balance that attracts people into this profession. So moving on, many people are attracted to this profession because they can create the kind of career they want to have. And these often go into private practice and own their own business. And this affords them the opportunity to structure their work hours, their holidays, and whether they want to take time off to raise a family. In the 2015 Boucher alumni survey, 65% of respondents who indicated they chose to limit their patient contact hours, so they were choosing to not maybe work full time, they did so because they're raising children and they value work-life balance. In addition to flexible schedules, NDs are able to see the patient population they want, and if they so desire, they can change focus or the type of practice they run during their career. NDs also treat a wide variety of patient conditions and can utilize various therapeutic modalities, such as botanical medicine, acupuncture, physical medicine, nutritional counseling, and much more. In most jurisdictions, NDs have a very broad scope of practice, and the most common practice focuses are digestive orders, nutrition, women's health, endocrinology, and fatigue. So moving on to some of the common obstacles faced by prospective students. As mentioned at the outset of my presentation, I would like to provide you with some insight into those most common obstacles that prospective students face when considering their naturopathic medical education. Uh, in a March 2017 survey, so just a few weeks ago, uh, current Boucher students were asked to rank the top three obstacles faced when considering naturopathic medical education. And the survey yielded 99 respondents, and the top three obstacles faced were Number one, the financial commitment. Number two, career income. And number three, school life and balance. So I'm gonna walk you through why these are the common obstacles and then provide you with some student perspectives on how they overcame the obstacles or justified the sacrifices. So moving to the next slide. Um, as is for most students considering all first professional programs, getting the financial resource together for four-year medical program is typically the most common challenge to face, so you're not alone. The cost of education has risen considerably in the past decade, and many of you have, probably have relied on some form of financial aid to support you through your undergraduate studies. And according to a Boucher Institute survey of our alumni two years ago, 40% of the respondents had some debt from their undergraduate studies before entering our program. For many of you, the idea of taking on debt for the first time in your life can be understandably uncomfortable. Taking on debt for any of us, whether it is to purchase a car, a condo, a house, or investing over six figures in medical school can be stressful. The difference, however, is that going into debt to obtain an education, in particular for an education that leads to a career, should be viewed as an investment in your future and yourself. It is still stressful. No way to ignore that, but that stress is often mitigated by the fact that graduates consistently find employment and report solid incomes. So according to a 2015 ANMC survey, uh, alumni survey, for those NDs practicing or using their degree full time, the mean salary after graduating in the United States was nearly 90,000 US dollars. A remarkable 97% of respondents to our 2015 Boucher uh, alumni survey were licensed as naturopathic doctors when they filled out the survey and nearly 88% of them were currently practicing. And of those that were not in practice, 75% of those stated they were taking a break from practice to raise a family and, and, and intended to return. So almost 100% were in practice. Um, finally, the amount of debt taken on by naturopathic medical students is considerably lower than that accrued by medical doctors. The average amount of student loan debt accrued in ND school is about 160,000 in US dollars in the United States and 100,000 Canadian dollars in Canada. And according to a 2014 survey conducted by the Association of American Medical Colleges, the average debt of medical students in a private medical school was $190,000, and over 50% of graduates owe more than $200,000, and nearly 10% owe more than $250,000, and those are American dollars. While not everyone needs loans or a line of credit to finance medical school, it is a reality for a high percentile of naturopathic medical students. So as mentioned, borrowing money is never easy. 
but doing so to find an education that will lead to a lifelong and rewarding career is part of, a, is part of the journey. Allison Scott, who will be speaking in a few minutes, will discuss the various funding options for naturopathic medical students. You are not alone if you're concerned about financing your naturopathic medical education. For our admissions team at Boucher, questions about program costs, financial aid, and income are the most common. Concerns over financing the program and the cost of living over four years are unfortunately the main reasons prospective students sometimes choose not to pursue this profession. And, and I'd honestly venture to guess that this is the main reason why students choose not to enter graduate school in most fields. So I'd like to share a few testimonials gathered over the past few weeks from current students at Boucher regarding borrowing money and going into debt. So here's the first one from a third year student. I knew that there was nothing else I wanted to do. I looked at the financial down payment as my investment and the future would be determined on self-care, authenticity, learning my craft and staying true to the real reason I wanted to be an ND. At the end of the day, I had to become an ND or I would never be satisfied with what I would otherwise be doing. Another quote from a different third year student. I see this as an investment in myself and that helps make the financial debt more tolerable. And yet another third year student. Once I accepted I would be in debt for the first time in my life and was able to sit with this for a while, the decision became much easier. I was resisting this at first because as I said earlier, it's uncomfortable. Once I realized this is what it would take what it was going to take to pursue something I was very passionate about, it became less of an obstacle for me. So as you can see from these comments, nobody is comfortable with debt, but knowing that they are in a program that will lead to a career they are passionate about and will create the future they aspire for, these students, current students, were able to overcome this obstacle when deciding to pursue this program. So let's move into another area, um, overcoming obstacles and in income. And here's what students say uh, when re researching career income. My end goal was always to work as a medical professional. I was willing to work hard and invest in my future. I understood that though financially challenging, many NDs are very successful as long as they work hard. And that's from a third year student and another quote from a second year student. It helped me to make contact with and meet practicing NDs before starting the program. And so I was able to ease my mind regarding financial success. And it had to be okay with incurring debt and going through with it in order to realize my dream of becoming a naturopathic doctor. One more, I researched and contacted different NDs and discussed with them their strategies that have helped them financially, them financially successful. Our admissions team strongly recommend that prospective students conduct informational interviews with practicing NDs. Um, it's advisable to interview NDs who are new to the profession, as well as those that are about eight to 10 years out in their experience, and if possible, elders in the profession. Obviously, do not ask them what their income is, but rather ask questions such as, are you satisfied with your income as an ND, or do you feel you have been successfully financially at this point in practice as you had hoped when you first entered your naturopathic medical program? Remember, NDs are busy, not just in practice, but with life, so do not get discouraged if it takes a few attempts to successfully connect with NDs who are willing to take 10 or 15 minutes of, your, of their time to answer your questions. I really suggest where possible for you to first do your research on the ND to get a sense of their practice and whether it's the right type of focus and their philosophies align with those of your own so you can maximize the opportunity to get your questions answered. Medical school is rigorous. Naturopathic medical school students have in excess of 4,100 required program hours, which includes a minimum of 1,200 hours of clinical training. So students can expect between 15 and 30 hours of homework per week, depending on their schedule and their term. In addition, many students are actively involved in campus events, initiatives such as clubs and student associations, and others volunteer in the community or even work a part-time job. So this, this program is four years and is a big commitment in terms of time, effort, resources, and energy. And it's important that prospective students really get a good sense of the rigors of the program and are as prepared as possible to manage the heavy schedule, which in some schools can be eight to 10 courses a term. This is why admissions departments always encourage prospective students to visit the campus and come sit in on a class. So certainly as students move through the program, they form strategies to adapt to the program expectations and workload. But finding the time to connect with family and friends or get involved in extracurricular activities can be an ongoing challenge. So be prepared to make some sacrifices and be flexible with your schedule as well as set realistic expectations on what you can accomplish. Many naturopathic medical students are, are obviously high achievers, but excelling on every task, paper, exam is not always possible. So students need to adjust their mindset to balance their courses and assignments as well as their own expectations. 
So in student services at Boucher, we offer many resources to support our students, such as personal counseling, wellness, on and off campus events, and of course, the advice and mentorship from senior students, faculty and staff. Some turns are harder to balance than others, and all prospective students can expect to be challenged and stretched in medical school. The program and experience is transformational in ways that are really hard to predict, and students learn not only new skills and information, but also learn and develop at a personal level as they mature into doctors. In many cases, graduates are amazed at how they have changed, developed, and grown as a person during the four-year program. So if you're open to this growth and development, then you're on the right track to having the tools to manage the program rigors. Here's a few quotes on how current students mentally manage the challenges of balancing school and life. I have enough passion for this type of medicine that the four years of a highly imbalanced lifestyle is worthwhile. The time I have spent here can, has just solidified my love and belief in what naturopathic medicine can do. So that's from a first year student. I have always thought that another four year program was tremendously long, but it goes by in a flash. It's shocking at quickly, how quickly actually. Don't worry about this one. You will be done before you know it. And that's from a third year student. So moving on to some advice as the current screen has from current students. So in this survey, current students were asked to offer advice to you guys, to prospective students in their decision-making process. And here's what a few of them had to say. I would ask them, can they imagine themselves doing anything else? Another student said, go see an ND in practice. Even if you aren't sick, it is a good way to see what the end goal looks like. If you don't like the vibe you get from the first one, go to another one. Job shattering really helped me make a decision. And from a first year student, it's not an easy decision and there are so many things to consider. It will be challenging on a physical, mental and emotional level. You'll get to discover more about yourself and grow as part of a community. It's overwhelming but worth it and listen to your gut. And finally, from another first year student, most do not know how broad the scope of practice it is for an ND. So I suggest a prospective student explore the spectrum that NDs do as well as explore the principles that differentiate us from allopathic practitioners. So I thought it would be good to finish up the presentation by talking a little bit about what current students like about the program. Students were asked to rank what they enjoyed about the program from most to least. The highest rank responses was students truly believed preparing to be an ND is what they should be doing, even more so than when they first applied to the program. Going back to early in my presentation regarding the transformational nature of the program, this aspect is clearly a very important component of the student experience and, and was in a tie for second in the survey. And one thing I consistently hear from students is they are so happy to be in a place where they are learning, sharing, collaborating, and creating with like-minded people. The learning environment at Naturopathic Medical School is inspirational and students generally feel at home once they start the program because the medicine, the curriculum, the educational experience are so in aligned with their own values and beliefs. So moving on to the last slide here, the big picture, I think I'll leave you with three powerful quotes from current students that will hopefully assist you as you reflect on the decision whether to pursue your dream of becoming a naturopathic doctor. So I want to thank you very much for listening and best of luck in your journey. And I'll pass it over to Allison Scott. Hi there, everybody. Um, as Mark mentioned, my name is Allison Scott, and we are um, hopefully everyone is seeing my screen here with the steps. Um, and now oh, here we go. So show my screen. Here we are. As uh, Dr. Yanez mentioned earlier, uh, I started my career in naturopathic medicine as an admissions advisor at the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. That was 11 years ago. Um, I have been uh, working with Bastyr University now for five years, started out as Associate Director of Admissions and Student Services down in San Diego, and just recently relocated to the Washington campus. Um, as director of admissions recruitment up here. So uh, I've, I've been working with the AANMC now for that whole 11 years and just love working with naturopathic students. I feel so lucky that this is what I get to call my job um, and just really happy to share some of this information with all of you. So thanks again, Mark, for all of that. Um, so now we're gonna talk a little bit more about, okay, this is this amazing profession. How do you get there? What are the steps to actually become an ND student before becoming becoming an ND. So we're going to talk a little bit today about the academic plan, your financial plan, 
your personal plan, and then how to apply. And as always, there's lots of really good information available on the AANMC website. And then of course you can link directly to each of the naturopathic schools from that site. Okay, so moving on. Let's talk about where all of the schools are. So now there are seven naturopathic schools in North America. Um, there are five schools here in the United States and two schools in Canada. Uh, Bastyr University has the two locations in Seattle, Washington and San Diego, California. Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine in Phoenix, Arizona. National University of Natural Medicine in Portland, Oregon. The National University of Health Sciences in Chicago. It's actually in Lombard, University of Bridgeport in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and then of course Boucher, uh, where Mark was just speaking from in Vancouver, and the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine in Toronto, Ontario. Um, so we are kind of all over North America, um, a lot of things of course kind of over here on the West Coast. Uh, but we uh, we we love that we're kind of all over the the country in North America, and hopefully um, there is a naturopathic school that is the right fit for you. Um, okay, moving on. All right, so the AANMC really does serve as a one-stop shop to connect you with one or more of the programs uh, in North America. So some of you might be thinking, gosh, I already live in Chicago. It'll be so nice for me to go to the NUHS. I don't have to move far away from my family. Or maybe you're somewhere uh, not near any of the schools, but you've always dreamed about living in San Diego, or you love the idea of NUNM being in downtown Portland. And that's the thing. There are, all of our schools are kind of in very unique areas. So for example, here in uh, Seattle, Bastyr is located kind of north of actual Seattle. When we're, we're in a beautiful park, uh, but not in downtown. Now, NUNM is in you know, the heart of Portland. Uh, and you have SCNM in the beautiful desert, um, kind of near Arizona State University. So one of the things that we'll talk about quite a bit throughout the presentation that you'll get from any of us at the AANMC is that it's so important for you to take the time, and we know it's time and money, but to maybe narrow down your choices and visit each school. So we'll get to that. But from AANMC, you can request information if you haven't already um, from a specific schools you're interested in. And then each school will have admissions advisors who will reach out to you um, to you know, get that conversation started so that we can start talking with you, not only about the profession, but you know, what might be unique about our individual schools. Um, then, of course, there's lots of things that are similar, too. Okay, so again, talking with advisors, the first thing that we really recommend is that advising appointment. It's so important for you, whether that's an advising appointment in person or over the phone, to start talking about uh, prerequisite requirements. What are the curriculum highlights? Something that's really important for you to know is that every uh, graduates of every naturopathic school sit for the same board exam. It's called the NPLEX, the Naturopathic Physicians Licensing Examination. So all of us have fairly streamlined curriculum because we all are preparing you for that same board exam. But there are things about each school that's a little bit unique. For example, in Arizona, as a naturopathic doctor, you can actually practice acupuncture under your ND license. So in Arizona only, acupuncture is part of the naturopathic curriculum. But if you decide to go and practice in any state but Arizona, you're going to need additional education. So for example, Bastyr University and NUNM offer dual degrees in acupuncture and oriental medicine. So there's all these little unique things about any school that might make it the right place for you. What is student life like? What is your clinic exposure? Really start thinking about yourself as a student and what might be important to you. All right, your academic plan. This is the first thing we want to help you figure out is honestly, we all have fairly similar, similar requirements. So as you're making that decision, as to which school might be the best one for you, let's get you started with your academic plan. So a transcript evaluation. One of the first things we'll recommend for you in that first advising appointment is to provide your admissions advisor with an unofficial copy of any and all transcripts. Now, for any of you that might have education from outside of the United States, we do need an official international evaluation. Um, on this, so here we mentioned WES, that stands for World Educational Services. That's probably the most commonly known one. Um, and that will help us translate, even if it's in English, we have to translate 
your transcripts information into United States, you know, credits and, and GPAs and all that fun stuff. So with your transcript evaluation, you're meeting with your advisor uh, who will be going through your transcripts for basically figuring out, okay, based on what our requirements are, what coursework do you have completed and what coursework would you possibly need in order to come to an ND program? And then our job as admissions advisors is to help you make that plan. We're going to help you figure out, okay, here's the coursework you need. Let's figure out a timeline. Are you taking those courses at a community college near you? Are you enrolling in a post-baccalaureate program? Uh, there's all kinds of options. And that's what we're here to do is help make that an easy, uh, because we know that can be the scariest part, right? This all seems overwhelming. How the heck am I ever going to get all these classes in? We're here to help you make it seem not so overwhelming. Um, so again, visiting the schools, you want to make sure that the campus is a good fit for you. All of us offer really fun events. So whether it's an open house event, you can do student for a day, you can come and sit in on classes, meet students, campus tours. I know most of our campuses will do uh, student-led campus tours, uh, which is a great opportunity to meet other students interested in programs. And of course, um, you know, I, because I think at any of the schools that offer multiple programs, the ND is still our biggest program. So chances are your tour guide would probably be a naturopathic doctorate student. Um, checking out the facilities, you know, do we, you know, certain campuses might have on-campus housing, some don't. For example, for Bastyr, our Washington campus does have student housing, our San Diego campus doesn't, and that might play a factor for you. Meeting with faculty and students. Admissions advisors fully know that while we are a great help to you, we're not really your, we're not the ones that you're going to make your decision based on. You need to meet faculty, you need to meet students, and you want to meet alumni. So let your advisor know that, like, hey, I have a question about, um, you know, how are, what's the grading system like, or what is the classroom environment? And maybe that's something a faculty member or a student can answer better for you. And then the surroundings, again, we're all in very different types of surroundings, whether that's in the city, out of the city, the climate, um, you know, we always, of course, hope that weather isn't the number one determining factor in your choice of a school. But, you know, I have worked with students in the past who had health conditions where, you know, a, a wet climate just wasn't going to work for their health conditions. So that dry air in Arizona was actually really good for them. So there's so many things for you to take into consideration. Um, so other things that you want to consider, academic rigor. Now, I will say all of us have extremely rigorous programs. Uh, class size, um, for example, you know, some schools might have a class size that can sometimes be as many as 100 students. Some might have a class size closer to 20 or 25. And what's better for you? Again, location, climate, sense of community, extracurricular opportunities. Take a look at the different campus life um, information, student organizations, student government what really speaks to you. Okay, so back to prerequisites. This is um, probably the, again, the number one goal of your first advising appointment is to really kind of chat, chat about this stuff. Of course, once you've uh, decided that the naturopathic career path is the right one for you, uh, our schools do require an undergraduate degree from an accredited college. And I, we can say safely that most of us are looking for a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher. Now, many schools may consider a lower cumulative GPA if we see strengths in the science courses or for example maybe you finished your bachelor's degree 25 years ago and you didn't do so hot but you've 25 years later now you've done all of your prerequisite courses you got a 4.0 of course those older grades don't impact our decision nearly as much we all have required coursework um, in biology chemistry often biochemistry can either be a requirement or just a very highly recommended uh, course to take before the ND, psychology, English, uh, some other recommended things. Most of us require a certain level of math, like college algebra. We love for you to have some business coursework ahead of time. Part of the profession can be uh, business. You know, you are going to have to understand marketing. You might be an entrepreneur someday. So having some business background is a great thing. Nutrition, such a huge part of being a naturopathic doctor is, you know, nutrition. So we understand you're probably already pretty passionate about that. If you have some classes in it, that's amazing. 
research is a huge area of importance in naturopathic medicine as we're, you know, fighting for legitimacy. Um, you know, the more students and doctors that are interested in research is super important. So if you have research experience, that's great. If you have passion in research, um, many of the schools have ongoing research projects happening and there's opportunities for you as a student to get involved in research. So definitely ask about that. Now, all of this being said, each school's requirements may differ a tiny, tiny bit. So you'll want to make sure you talk to the advisors from each program so that let's say you're kind of deciding between three schools, what do you need that applies to all of them and maybe what's specific to any of those schools, just so that you can be totally aware. How can you strengthen your application? So life experiences are super important. Usually the type of student who is interested in naturopathic medicine is someone who likes to give back. So I would definitely say that the vast majority of applications and resumes I see, you know, students already have volunteer experience. You all tend to be very compassionate, giving, caring people, but that's obviously a strengthener. Um, travel experience, work experience. We want you to brag on your resume. Make sure we know about awards and recognitions that you've received, scholarships you've received. Have you attended conferences or seminars that are health or medicine related or even things like social justice, uh, continuing education, maybe you've been involved in student government in college or you know uh, maybe you were part of uh, different organizations in college um, any of those things really what is important is that of course your academics are important but who you are as a person is equally important and I always like to frame it this way our admissions process is very similar to how the naturopathic doctor treats the patient, right? The ND treats the whole person, looks at the whole person. As an admissions officer, I am looking at you as a whole person. Yes, I want to be sure that you're on track to be able to handle the rigor of our program, but it's about way more than that. So we really do get to look at who you are. And of course you get to um, get, you know, tell us more about you personally in your essays. And then each school will have an in-person interview interview, uh, meaning that you'll have that opportunity, or I, I believe some schools will offer Skype interviews as well, but that interview is the opportunity for you to really share with us what makes you unique. You get to tell us about your passion for naturopathic medicine. How do you want to get out there and change people's lives? Um, field work is really important. I would say this is one of the most important elements of your preparation to becoming a naturopathic doctor is getting out there and getting exposure to naturopathic doctors. So interviewing an ND, that can happen in person or on the phone. And what I usually tell my applicants is I like to think of it a little bit like dating. You are contacting an ND for your first date, which is going to be an interview with them. Do they have 20 or 30 minutes to sit down with you so that you can ask them questions about why they chose to become a naturopathic doctor? Why did they cho choose their particular school that they went to? What are they doing in their practice? Um, what advice would they have for somebody wanting to become an ND? What do they know now they wish they knew then? Now, when you ask them for the second date, which might be you uh, shadowing or observing them now that they've met you and know that you are a articulate and professional person who they'd feel comfortable inviting into that patient room you'll have way more likelihood of them saying yes now if you just kind of call them out of the blue and say hey I want to come in and shadow you they might not be so keen on saying yes they never met you um, is that appropriate for their patient so those all those things being said we definitely recognize that many of you are in parts of the country that don't have a whole lot of ND so just do the best you can. Um, we can help you find NDs in your state. You might be surprised there would be licensed naturopathic doctors working in your unlicensed state. Many states have a state association. For example, there is a Texas Association of Naturopathic Doctors, a Georgia Association of Naturopathic Physicians. Let us help you find those websites, locate those doctors. Then also there is the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians and also the Canadian Association of Naturopathic Physicians where you can do that broad search as well. Um, so again, volunteer work, research experience, and then of course, if you happen to have medical work experience, you've been a nurse or an EMT, fantastic. That just means you have even more um, awareness of probably why naturopathic doctors are needed. 
uh, where to find an ND. Again, so the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians, naturopathic.org, Canadian Association of Naturopathic Doctors, CAND.ca. You can click on find an ND, use the radius search, use your zip code, all kinds of functions on there. You'll be able to locate um, hopefully an ND within a reasonable amount of miles from you. Again, at least some phone interviews would be great um, if you can get in to interview shadow NDs. If you have never seen a naturopathic doctor as a patient, that also is key, right? Like you need to know what it feels like to get naturopathic care for yourself. Um, planning and preparing. So all kinds of important stuff going on here with tuition, room and board, living expenses. Um, how long will it take for you to complete your degree? Um, I would say the vast majority of United States students, um, I can't speak for Canadian students, Mark might be able to speak to this, uh, do rely almost completely on federal financial aid to cover everything. Uh, some students are lucky and they might have family support or parent support or savings, but most of our students do not. So it's just important that you're prepared for the costs. And I think I can feel fairly safe in saying all of us are going to give you all of the real numbers. We are going to be 100% upfront with you about what the costs are, uh, because it's important that you make a decision based on you know real information. We're not going to sugarcoat stuff. We're not going to you know hide numbers from you. Our goal is to be upfront and fully honest with you. Uh, so things that are important for you to start thinking about are budgeting. Um, you will be on a pretty meager budget as a student. So things that you can think about ahead of time. How can you reduce your debt? Maybe really start aggressively paying down credit cards. Try to get rid of debt so that when you're a student, you're already going to be pretty stressed. You're going to have so much coursework and things going on. The last thing you need is financial stuff causing you in even more stress and worry. So try to set yourself up to be prepared. Save money. Have some savings set aside for emergencies. That's super important. Preparing a financial plan, uh, you'll be, as a um, U.S. student, uh, filling out the FAFSA. Uh, the free application for federal student aid. Uh, most schools do have not only entering student scholarships uh, as well as continuing student scholarships. So um, a lot of those for entering student scholarships are merit-based. So based on your academic performance, even more motivation to do really well in those prereq classes. There are lots of student loan op op opportunities out there, scholarship opportunities. A lot of us have work study programs. Um, there are private loans. We would definitely want to talk to you about the options you have with federal loans first. Uh, private loans can have fairly high interest rates. So we're here to help you with that. Our financial aid offices are here to help you with that. Um, we're not the experts on financial aid in admissions. We know general information. And then our financial aid folks are very happy to help, you know, lay it all out in uh, a plan for you. Um, AANMC site does have a financial aid page. And then, of course, each school will have financial aid information also. Loan repayment program. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time here. More than anything, just wanted to share with you that there are a variety of different kinds of loan repayment programs out there for you. A lot of them based on your income. When you graduate from college, or from college, from the ND program, unless you are got something really super cool lined up, you're probably not going to be making a ton of money right away. So at least the government recognizes that and will allow you to pay loans kind of based on your income. Um, so just so you're aware, there's lots of options. Um, you can see the website down at the bottom, studentaid.ed.gov, all kinds of information there. Now, even more exciting are the possibilities of loan forgiveness. So things like public service loan forgiveness, if you're working in a nonprofit organization for at least 30 hours a week after you've made 120 on time payments, there's an opportunity for uh, your federal aid to be forgiven. Washington State happens to have a professional loan repayment program. Other states might too. Uh, Indian Health Services, there's an opportunity to work as a naturopathic doctor. Um, and that was really a very exciting thing for us that naturopathic doctors were seen on par with MDs and DOs in terms of their loan forgiveness opportunities. And then clinical work with the National Institutes of Health, the NIH. Um, that's pretty competitive, but another opportunity to work, get up to 35 grand a year for work um, 
or repayment for qualified loans for a two-year commitment with clinical research. For those of you passionate about research, there are some opportunities there. So again, didn't want to spend a ton of time here just so that you're aware there's lots of ways that you will get help uh, repaying your loans and then also ways that you could possibly even have loan money forgiven. Uh, again, university, we each have scholarships. There's private scholarships. Be really aware of deadlines and requirements. So most of our schools, the financial aid office will probably send you information about continuing student scholarships and we know you get a lot of email but gosh are those important emails or what so make sure that you're keeping an eye out for those things a lot of financial aid offices will have um, info boards so maybe walk by the office check it out see what kind of deadlines are coming up check out work study programs um, for example in uh, both at SCNM and here at Bastyr I've worked with student workers called student ambassadors or peer advisors so you could work with us here in admissions giving tours presenting at events maybe even going out and doing outreach um, a lot of different opportunities for you to work as a work study student, maybe even in a certain department like research or, um, you know, all, all different kinds of things. And that helps you earn a little bit of cash on the side. Now, job satisfaction is something that uh, we really think is, is pretty key. Um, you know, you, you may, if you're looking at different satisfaction rates for different types of physicians out there, you may see that um, a lot of doctors don't necessarily feel super satisfied with what they're doing. And we're so excited that the majority of naturopathic doctors love what they're doing. Um, so, you know, 70% of naturopathic medical graduates are satisfied or very satisfied with work-life balance. And that's hugely important, right, is, you know, being a healthy, happy person. Um, and then we compare that with the 41% of US, physici U.S. physicians outside of naturopathic doctors that are satisfied with work-life balance. So that is almost 30% of difference. Um, and then when we look at the decision to become a naturopathic doctor, again, you can see it's about 74% really are satisfied or very satisfied with their decision to become an ND, which is just such leaps and bounds above more conventional physicians. And that's because of work-life balance. Um, I think, and that really also comes with the ability to really connect with and make an impact on your patient's health. There's so much more of a relationship there. My favorite naturopathic principle is doceri, the doctor as teacher you're developing that connection with your patients. Okay, so how to apply. Um, the ND schools that are using our centralized common application system is called NDCAS. That's Boucher, Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine, SCNM in Arizona, and Bridgeport in Connecticut. So you can go to ndcas.org and submit one application and one set of materials, and it can get sent to each of those schools if you're interested in being considered by each of those universities. Now, Bastyr University uh, National College of Natural Medicine, or I guess Na National University of Natural Medicine now, and National University of Health Sciences, uh, we all have separate application processes. So you do have to apply with each of our schools individually. Um, and I believe most of us have opportunities for maybe a waived application fee if you come to visit campus. I can at least speak for Bastyr. If you visit us for a campus tour, advising appointment, or maybe come to an open house, we do allow a waived application fee. So definitely check with different schools on that. And Allison, uh, just yes. just to include in there, that uh, website for the National University of Natural Medicine should be nunm.edu. But no worries, it'll automatically redirect. Yes, so it again, will. <laughs> will automatically redirect you to NUNM. So those of you that are listening, recently, uh, National College of Natural Medicine has been named as such for many years, but because they're growing and expanding and adding other programs, they have now transitioned to National University of Natural Medicine, NUNM. So NCNM or NUNM.edu should get you there. Uh, thanks, Dr. Yanez. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's move on here. Um, things that you will need to be prepared for. So an online application with all of the standard application type stuff, you're going to insert your personal information. You'll be asked to self-report your prerequisites so that we see a prerequisite plan, which of course we're confirming with you when we do your transcript evaluation as well. Um, and we will need official transcripts at this point. We can use unofficial transcripts for preliminary review, but we we do need official transcripts for the actual application. 
um, letters of recommendation. Most schools, I believe, require two. Usually it's one professional and one academic. You'll have a personal statement or um, essay questions as part of your application. Uh, many schools do require an application fee. Again, I encourage you to ask about uh, what opportunities there are for a waived fee. Uh, we want you to come visit anyway. You'll upload a resume, and that's just a really neat way for us to see your um, occupational history, your educational history. And again, please include awards, scholarships. Um, you're welcome to include your naturopathic interviewing and shadowing experience here as well. Um, and then some schools may have additional um, essay or fees that might be involved, so definitely check with each and every school. All right, free upcoming events that you should check out. So there's some fun stuff happening all over the country. Um, at Johns Hopkins University, there's a health profession school recruitment fair, George Washington University. We have a great webinar coming up on April 26th, more about licensure and also practicing in what we call a pre-licensed state, because we know that eventually every state in the United States and hopefully every territory in Canada will recognize naturopathic doctors. So we call it a pre-licensed state. Um, so for those of you that live in a state where currently naturopathic doctors might not be recognized, you know, it is possible to have a practice and to make a living. So please attend that uh, webinar very eye-opening. We also have another one coming up more about a health uh, topic, naturopathic approaches to women's health and a tricky case of endometriosis. Um, a couple other events, the Northeast Association of Advisors for the Health Professions, they're going to have an event in June. We are, um, unfortunately, it's not on here. We apologize. There's also the Western Association of Advisors for the Health Professions happening in May in Portland. So for those of you in the Northwest, um, I'm sure we'll have that on our website as well. And then this is really exciting one of my favorite events. Every year, the AANP, the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians, has the yearly conference or convention. And when we have that at a city where there is a naturopathic school, we also do a fun event for those of you interested in becoming a naturopathic doctor. We call it the ND Experience at AANP. So that will be July 15th at the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine in Phoenix because the conference is in uh, the Phoenix area. So please join us for that there'll be representatives from quite a few of the naturopathic schools there in attendance and it's a fun way to learn more about what are the hot topics right now in naturopathic medicine get to talk to nds who are practicing many times the cream of the crop so really encourage you especially if you're in the southwest to think about coming to that event and i think that wraps up um my portion. Um, and so I think we do have a good like 13 minutes left, Dr. Yanez. So we should be able to maybe answer some questions. All right. Um, Dr. Yanez, are you are you able to? Well, let's see. I know that Dr. Yanis has been answering some questions as she goes. Um, we did, it looks like we did have a question of, will this PowerPoint presentation be available after the webinar? And the answer to that is yes, there will be a recording available later today. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if I should keep going on um, answering the questions that I see in here. Allison, um, Allison oh, there are you, you go. able to hear me? I am now. Okay. Weird. All right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yes. Yeah, so I, I wanted to thank both of you uh, for for such a great presentation, and uh, and really for all of you who have come here, uh, there is there's so much that this naturopathic education really brings to your life. And you know, I, I have the slide up here on the six principles of naturopathic medicine. So much so because you know this not only guides us as NDs, but it also guides how we respond in life. And so, you know, I, I, I just would really want to leave you with that. And then one last quote from a student uh, about this life-changing decision. And we recognize that this is really a life-changing decision. Uh, so third-year student stated, I knew that I was choosing a life path that I was passionate about and committed to, not just a career. And that's so much what we hear from folks uh, out there in res in regards to naturopathic medicine and that they're called to this, that they really can't see themselves doing anything else. So yes, Allison, thank you very much. I was responding to questions uh, throughout the course of while you guys were talking. Um, so first off, 
Uh, Mark, there are a few questions here about Canada uh, and funding uh, funding sources in Canada. So can U.S. federal loans be used um, at the Canadian schools? So not at the Boucher Institute, unfortunately. We do not have um, the access to the uh, U.S. Department of Education funding, but the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine out in Toronto does. So um, that is something that U.S. students can access through CCNM. And can you speak a little bit to the practice of NDs in Canada? As far as the practice in ND, yes. Yeah, so um, the scope of practice for NDs varies by each province. Um, here in British Columbia, it is the broadest scope of practice in, in Canada and one of the broadest in North America. So with regards to our program training, it includes traditional Asian medicine and, and acupuncture. That's something that NDs have in their scope. There is also prescribing authority. So um, NDs, um, in most cases, don't prescribe pharmaceuticals. They mostly have the opportunity to work with the patient and, and get them off of pharmaceuticals. But there is prescribing authority in uh, in British Columbia. It's not part of the training at the Boucher Institute. It's continuing education that's available. Um, some jurisdictions also have in their scope things like minor surgery. So the scope of practice does vary by each province as it does in the state, but it is quite broad out here in British Columbia and in most, in most jurisdictions. Thanks, Mark. And uh, can you speak to acupuncture training in Canada as well? So I can't speak for other provinces, but like I said, um, the acupuncture training is part of the traditional Asian medicine curriculum at Boucher. We have six therapeutic modalities and traditional Asian medicine is one of those pillars. So when, an end, when a student graduates our program and gets licensure here in British Columbia, under their scope of practice, they are licensed to uh, perform acupuncture. Um, so that doesn't necessarily translate to all other provinces, just like in the United States, they do have different uh, licensure requirements and acupuncture may or may not be part of that scope. Fabulous. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so there's, um, uh, there's a question here uh, about shadowing. So either of you can answer this. Uh, is shadowing an ND required for admission? I can start. Um, I will say that... Um, especially if the person lives in an area where there there are naturopathic doctors i would i would venture to say it is required um now we know that not all nds again are are going to say yes when you ask them to shadow again we encourage you to maybe interview them first and then ask them to shadow so they get to know you and then will feel way more comfortable saying yes because they they know you. Um, so it's a game of numbers. So let's say you interviewed at least five naturopathic doctors, maybe two will say yes to shadowing or at least one. Um, we then And the reason is we want you to have that experience so that you see naturopathic medicine in action for yourself so that you can really be confident that it's the right career path for you. Um, you know, some of you may have like grown up with naturopathic medicine or been so lucky to have been treated by a naturopathic doctor. That's amazing too. Um, just the more experience and exposure you can have to naturopathic doctors gives you way more to speak on as to why you want to be an ND, what you see yourself doing as an ND. I'm not going to say, oh gosh, if you haven't shadowed, there's no way you're going to be admitted. That's not true. It will just be, it's a very important element of your preparation uh, for, for interviewing for naturopathic medical school. I'd like to add one thing. I, I think a lot of, at least here in Canada, a lot of um, students in undergraduate schools don't realize that their uh, undergraduate school healthcare program covers visits to naturopathic doctors. So if it's a challenge to find an ND to shadow and you're concerned about having to pay to go see an ND, you could always look at how your undergraduate healthcare program covers a visit to ND. And that's a great way to get that experience. I'm, I interview all people that come and apply to the Boucher Institute. And I'm sometimes surprised that some people haven't had any direct exposure to the medicine, whether as a patient or informational interviewing or job shadowing. Um, I don't think those people have a full awareness of what this medicine represents. And, and, and its scope. So a lot of those times, those people are sort of sent back to do a little bit more homework in their decision making. And it's by no means a requirement, but I think any prospective student who's doing due diligence should require that of themselves. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so there's a question, and I've been actually getting a number of questions uh, from foreign trained uh, medical doctors, as well as osteopathic physicians, folks who've done uh, some level of medical training 
Uh, and so can either of you or both of you speak to how, uh, how folks with uh, another degree could apply to naturopathic programs? Um, I can speak to the Boucher Institute. Um, we do accept uh, people who have first professional degrees as advanced standing applicants into our program, depending on the type of training and how how long ago it was. Um, we, there will be certain components of the curriculum that they can get advanced standing in, things such as the biomedical sciences, for example, and anatomy. Um, but because of the structure of the Boucher courses, we don't have electives. It's a four-year rigorous program. People that do come in with advanced standing typically still have the better part of three years in order to finish their education and we don't currently have a bridge program at the Boucher Institute and I know a few of the other schools do so maybe Allison can speak to that. Yeah, I, to my knowledge, the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine has a specific bridge program for um, conventional doctors interested in becoming an ND. As far as I know, that is the only official bridge program out there. Um, I believe all of the schools do accept advanced standing applicants um, or transfer applicants. If somebody is interested in transferring from one ND school to another for some reason, or from a, um, you know an allopathic program or osteopathic program interested in transferring into an ND. Uh, and then each school, I think, has different ways of going about it. Uh, so, for example, Bastyr University for, a, for a, a medical doctor or an osteopathic doctor, in order to be considered advanced standing, we do require that you've taken and passed the USMLE at least step one. Uh, or if have not within the last seven years, we may ask that you start from the beginning of our program. The reason being is that at the end of year two, all naturopathic students are taking the NPLEX part one, the first part of the board exam, which is heavy in basic sciences. And if you haven't taken that coursework or taken and passed the USMLE step one recently, we're not setting you up for success by not having you take that coursework to prepare. So I know that's specific to Bastier. I believe each of the schools kind of has a different way of going about it. Um, of course, we'll be requiring transcripts from all of your medical universities. Many times the, there might be a need for syllabi to dig in um, and it is a very complicated process sometimes um, but our we're, we love advanced standing students i think they offer a lot of diversity and complexity to the classes they bring a lot of great experience um, so it's our goal to assist you uh, just be aware that it's going to be a complicated process and something that's important to know if you're an advanced standing or transfer student we cannot tell you how much credit you would get if you haven't applied you have to apply, submit your information, and then it takes a little bit of time. Uh, we, we, it's a little bit of what came first, the chicken or the egg. We get it. You might not want to apply unless you know, but that's the only way we know um, is once we get your application, you're an applied student, there might be a fee and a transfer or uh, advanced standing application fee. Uh, but it's, it is a very, it can be a lengthy process. It does take some time. So we just ask that you you be patient with us and, and we'll, we'll do our best. Thank you, Allison. Uh, so do you have any advice for folks that are choosing to be an ND as their second career? Maybe you've been out of school for a while. And before I have you answer that, I will say that the AANMC holds an archive of our past webinars. And in January, we had a webinar for career changers uh, and had a gentleman who uh, started to be an ND at 45, uh, and he was a religious studies teacher prior. So uh, that is that is absolutely an option. But um, would either of you have any advice for folks who are a career changer? I can start. I mean, I, we've seen lots of career changers come into the program. Um, I've heard even at one of the American schools, there was someone that came in in, the, in his 70s just to be, to be able to complete this type of a program, not so much to practice. And what I do find from career changers is there's probably a little bit more to weigh into the decision making. And then a lot of times they have families or they're worried about giving up an income for four years and, and then having to build a practice on the other end. But a lot of them, um, they have a lot of life experience and they add a lot of value to the to the educational experience for other students because of their perspective. They typically um, have a bit of a transition as anyone into the into the naturopathic medical program on the, on the work-life balance. But once they sort of hit their stride, they can pull on a lot of life experiences and resources to, to be able to successfully go through the program. 
and they have a little bit more life experience as far as running a business in a lot of cases. So the other end of going into private practice is sometimes an easier transition for them. I would say the same thing as any other prospective students. Just really make sure you do your homework on whether this is a values fit, um, a good lifestyle fit, that you've done the research and connections with NDs, that you've sat in in classes and got a sense of what the community is like and what the fellow student body is like as well. So um, those are the main things I would I would advise. Yeah, and, and I would add that, you know, in my many years now of advising for naturopathic school, I've I've worked with so many applicants who, um, you know, are coming back after been in one career, maybe sometimes two careers, and it definitely is a challenge, and I think probably the, the toughest thing is knowing that after you've been maybe, you know, working and making a salary and all of that, that for four years, sometimes five, for four years, you're going to have to put everything aside and really focus on medical school. And that can be a challenge. Um, and we know that student loan debt is a scary thing. Um, and that's why we, we really want students to budget, be smart about money, um, but also not to be too afraid of, you know, living off loans because that's what allows you to have your entire, you know, that entire four years to focus on, you know, naturopathic medical school. Again, where the, the main goal is for you to take and pass those naturopathic board exams and become a physician. So it is a huge life change for those students who have been out there in the working world. Uh, but the benefit is because there's lots of you, each of us can probably put you in touch with students at our schools who are who have done that. So they can tell you, you know, how they made it work, maybe just help you feel like, hey, you've done it, I can do it too. Um, and that's one of the coolest things I think about our programs is that it really is kind of, and this sounds a little corny, but instant family just add one water. You're going to be surrounded by, you know, hundreds of people, many times of other people who are, have the same values as you or are, are passionate about the same things you are. And that becomes your support network, especially your cohort, your class. Um, so you will have this community of people in your university with, you know, all of the naturopathic schools. We're all one big family that want to help you and help you feel successful. Thank you. Uh, can you speak? I know we're coming up on time here to end the webinar. Can you speak? Uh, is, is it possible to go to school part time? Um, at the Boucher Institute, it's certainly possible to go part time. We do have a cohort model of education, uh, meaning that small groups of, of individuals matriculate into the program together and they move through each class as a group. Uh, so, you know, some students do opt to move to part time to help support themselves financially or for family reasons or, or others. So it is an, an option, but it does slow down the period of time and it does move at least Boucher those students into other cohorts, which is not not ideal in most cases. And my experience with the U.S. schools is there there may be the opportunity for you to move to a five-year track, um, which is still not part-time. It slows the program down a little bit, but our, our programs are really meant to be completed in four years, and they are full-time during the day, Monday through Friday, between the hours of eight and five, primarily, you know, about 30 hours a week of class and labs. Uh, it, I, I know Bastier and SCNM at least do not have any type of part-time option. Um, and I, for most of us, you do have to complete your degree within six years maximum. Um, and then the, the caveat is the longer you're in school, the more money you might be borrowing. Um, so that's something to just be aware of. Um, but of course, that five-year option is great for students who might, you know, get pregnant while they're in medical school or maybe have to take a leave of absence for a year for some reason. So, you know, you do have a little bit of flexibility, but it's still going to be very much a, a full-time program, even on that five-year track. Allison and Mark, can either of you speak uh, to any schools who have Ayurveda as part of the naturopathic program? So uh, here at Bastyr, anyhow, we actually have a separate degree program for Ayurveda. We have a master's degree in Ayurvedic science. There's a tiny, tiny bit of Ayurveda included in our constitutional assessment course for first year students. But because of the interest, I believe, of our students in Ayurveda, you can actually do a dual master's degree as a naturopathic student in Ayurveda. So that is something that we do offer. Um, I couldn't speak to the other schools. It's not something that's offered at Boucher. 
And so that brings me to a point uh, for all of the graduates, and I know we're coming up on time here, and I know you folks have to get going, uh, but every single one of the schools, somebody asked me, is there a best school? And it, my answer is every school is a fabulous school. Uh, they wouldn't be an a and MC member if they weren't. Uh, but I think, you know, it really begs the question of what are you trying to get out of your investment in naturopathic medical education? Um, and ask those questions of the schools, because every single school has their strengths and their weaknesses. Uh, just like undergraduate schools all have strengths and weaknesses, and graduate programs do as well. So what is it you're trying to get out of the program? And then once you've thought about what you're trying to get out of the program, ask those questions. You know, talk to the the admissions counselors uh, from all of the schools. We ha- At AANMC website, we have a request info uh, button on the homepage where you can get information from any or all of the member schools and they will start to contact you via email, phone if you give your phone number, uh, so that you can start to get some information from the colleges and really make a comparison for yourself because while there is no one best school, there is a best fit for you. And so uh, with that, I am going to conclude today's webinar and thank both you and uh, Mark and Allison for joining us today. And I will stay on uh, and have answer, answer as many questions as I can get to. Uh, if you have any additional questions, you can go to info at aanmc.org or our 800 number, 800-345-7454. It's up on the screen now. And uh, with that, we conclude today's webinar. And I thank you all so very much for coming. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you both.